The brothers, the brothers, the brothers. All right, we're back. What's going on? We're back. We're back. I'm in my new game room. Check it out. Wow. Yeah, I know. So, so give, give us a little tour if you can, or uh, really I want to. I want to do that on a separate video. I don't want to spoil anything for you. All right. Um. Otherwise, what's the point of doing a separate video? You know. Yeah. Right. Um. I mean, I already know what you have anyway. So. Yeah. Uh, spoiler, it looks like my old collection room, except replace the wood paneling with drywall or, uh, you know, with uh, white walls. I don't know what you call it. With walls that are white. Drywall? Drywall? Wood wall? Uh, I don't I, know. Anyway. Uh, we're not carpenters. Yeah, I know. We're not. And I don't notice I don't have any posters up. I went to put up my posters and I was like, like, this is a brand new house. I've never bought a brand new house before and i'm like yeah. terrified of like even like putting one tiny pin into the wall because i'm yeah. gonna mark it up you know and so i'm i'm like not doing any posters right now i know i need to just get over that but just wait like a year and then it won't be a brand new house anymore exactly you can do whatever you want exactly yeah yeah at that point i'm just gonna torch it right. uh, so yeah i'm in my new game room uh awesome how, how have things been with you any garage sales over there no uh, I mean, there's a few every weekend, but it's one of those things like how much driving do I really want to do yeah. in order to hit like a dozen garage sales, you know, like last in the, in past summers, you know, I could drive, you know, 30 miles round trip and I, I could hit 50 or a hundred yard sales. And now it's like, okay, I could drive. 30 miles round trip and I would hit 10 yard sales. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I don't want to spend my time. Like no, that. You're right. It's a lot of driving. Now you did go out at least once, right? Cause you, you sent me a photo. Yeah. Of something. What was that? It was just some controllers for the Wii. Okay. It was a Wii. I don't well, think I'll, we'll, uh, we'll overlay a photo um, in the video. Okay. It was Xbox 360 with, I think one or two controllers and then a bunch of Wii controllers. Okay. And everything worked great. And the guy wanted $10 for everything. So I was like, okay. And it was like second gen 360, like the black model that those are worth a little more because they're a little more reliable. They didn't get the red ring like the first gen did. Yeah, for sure. So, and I, I ended up selling everything. I got like the, the Wii controllers were all different colors, which are always nice. Like there was a blue one and a pink one or something, and those always sell pretty well. So I think I got well over a hundred dollars for everything, and I paid ten bucks. So, but yeah, that's pretty much the only sale I've had any luck at all. Yeah, I have hit like three garage sales since I moved here. I've just been so busy. When you move, there's unpacking and you know storage pods. So sure. I've, I've had a lot of work to do. I hit. Three garage sales last weekend, and then on the third sale, I asked if she had video games, and she said no. So I said, "Well, what about Game Boy games? You know, that's not a video game." No. And uh, she said, "Yeah, I have two Game Boys." So I'm like, "Great, can you go bring them out?" She goes in her house, she brings out a DS, a 3DS, and a pile of pretty good games. Um, this has happened to me so many times over the years. I know. You have video games? No. Okay, what do you call this? Yeah, so long story short, for 40 bucks, I got a 3DS, a DS, um, in remarkable condition. I mean, she hmm. said her son grew out of the games, and uh, he took amazing care of this stuff. Most boys just slobber all over everything and mark all the screens up like crazy. These, I mean, the 3DS is just, it looks almost brand new. And um, mm -hmm. everything works great. Uh, pile of games, uh, a lot of first party stuff, a couple of Zeldas in there, Mario, uh, Smash. So good stuff, really good stuff for 40 bucks. And then I had one of the deal on the Facebook Marketplace, which I've been actually really looking at a lot out here because there's just less competition where I am now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I ended up getting an Xbox 360 with uh, you know, a 250 gig model, the slim version. And three controllers. One of them was a, a camo color controller. Uh, and then one controller was wired, which is always nice. 
and 40 bucks for that, which is, which was, a, it sat in the marketplace for four days with no offers. And mm -hmm. uh, I, was, I was pretty happy to have that. And mom needed a new Xbox 360, so I gave it to her and kept the controllers, which probably are worth $40 all by themselves. So Why did mom? Her old one just started, uh, like, emitting massive amounts of heat when it was off. That's not what I meant. What are you asking? Why did she need an Xbox 360? She's not a gamer. Because the grandkids come over and play Halo all day long. They need something to do. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I, I've moved, and that was quite the process. I um, I did have some questions for you, though, about yeah. garage sales, because we haven't really okay. caught up in a while. So I wanted to see what you think about some things, because I, I have some of my own thoughts. But do you think garage sales are going to make a return to pre-COVID days? And if they, if they do, are there going to be like fewer of them, more of them? Uh, you were patrons? Or what do you think? Not this year. No, not this year. I mean, I mean, I was hopeful a few months ago that we would have kind of a end of season surge of garage sales from all the people that weren't able to have one early in the year, but that's clearly not happening. I think next year, if if by May or June, if this whole COVID thing is behind us. I think there could be an explosion of garage sales next year because there will be a lot of people that did not did not have one this year. And a lot of Goodwills are not accepting stuff right now. A lot of thrift stores, they're very picky about what they accept. They're more picky than they used to be. I don't know. They have rules about what kind of stuff they'll take and what they won't take. It's weird. But a lot of people are just piling up stuff and not getting rid of it. So when they do finally open back up, I think it's going to be a gold rush. I hope so. Are you on your computer or your phone? Computer. Can you like set it down or hold it still? I'm going to have a seizure over here getting motion sick. Okay. <laughs> I'll try. I'm on a recliner. So when I talk, it kind of bounces. I'll try, I'll try to keep it. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Uh, That's cool. So another thing that is pretty obvious to us in this community is that the value of video games across the board are spiked. They're, they're higher than they've ever been before. People yep. are going after Madden and Tony Hawk games like crazy, which I never thought would happen. And, and that's just, you know, that's the low end. Um, everything is selling incredibly well. And I think people are more informed now because everyone is buying these things they're going on ebay they're spending you know a hundred dollars for a wii with wii sports which is crazy to me that that's a hundred dollars now and and so these are you know a lot of the same people that we're going to their garage sales next year so now are they going to ask too much are they even going to sell it what do you think that's going to look like <sighs> I don't buy a lot of stuff from people that bought it secondhand in the first place. I mean, most of the stuff I buy has been sitting around in the garage for 15 years. I'm not too worried about that. Right. I don't think there's going to be a lot of that. But yeah, prices are up. Across the board, a lot of hobbies right now, prices are up. You know, when this started, when this um, pandemic started, there was a lot of talk of, you know, what's going to happen to, to prices? Are they, going to, are they going to tank? It looks like we're headed for a recession, right? What happens during a recession? People don't have money. They don't spend money. Prices go down. But that hasn't happened. And it's, it's been in a lot of different markets, too. I got a friend who's really into sports cards, you know, baseball cards, basketball cards. He says the same thing has happened to that hobby. It's just taken off during this whole thing. Um, toys, action, the old antique vintage toys, action figures, Star Wars, that kind of stuff, just re selling really well right now. Video games, I have my whole video game collection uploaded into price charting. I do too. And so they tell you like the current value and they tell you the historical value of it going back, I don't know how long. And I look 
on my collection, and I look starting in March, the value of my collection has increased by about 20%. Just doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah, mine's about the same. I, I was going to yeah. say a little more than that, maybe 25, 30%. Yeah, but yeah, it's insane. It's insane what's worth money. Like I know. Like I said, sports games. How did this happen, dude? We sports started selling for like thirty dollars. Oh, goodness. The most common game on the planet. Yeah. Uh, Animal Crossing on the GameCube was over a hundred dollars at one point. Yeah. What? I mean, this is not sustainable. These prices are going to come back down. They're not going to crash. I'm not predicting a crash. But they're going to come back down to reality. My other question for you. So I, I think it's fair to say that the, the number of gamers out there is at an all-time high, right? So is yeah. that, is, is a byproduct of that now going to create future collectors? In other words, more competition at garage sales? Is it going to keep the values of these games high because there's just more collectors, more gamers, I should say? than there ever have been? When things are valuable, it's usually because kids grew up with them and then they become adults with disposable income and they want to relive their childhood and then things start being worth money. Current kids uh, aren't really materialistic the way that previous generations were. They've grown up in a digital age where they just download everything and they don't really have a lot of physical copies of stuff. And so I'm not sure what's going to happen in, you know, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. I'm re I really don't know. It's hard to predict. It's just a strange future. I, I don't know if, like, like you said, there could be a lot more garage sales next year. People could be afraid of the virus still. Um, and by the way, I've been practicing no social distance whatsoever. I never wash my hands, and I don't wear a mask if it's absolutely required, and everybody should be doing that. Honestly, I've said this before. I want to get this virus. I would love to get this virus. Get it out of the way now. Because yeah. It's just like the chicken pox. Remember when you were a kid? Everyone was like, hey, you should try to get the chicken pox because you don't want to get it when you're old, right? Everyone said that. What's the difference? Tell me. What is the difference? You don't want to get it when you're old, do you? Don't live my life in fear. I never have, for better or worse. I mean, when we were kids, we used to play with spiders and snakes. And I mean, holy crap! If if that if we had poisonous spiders in our region, I, I probably wouldn't be alive right now. I, I mean, I've just I've never had fear of of diseases or germs or anything. I, I never wash my hands. I don't give a crap. I just I don't live my life like that. Yeah. I mean, you and I have always been that way. We, we would get up at the crack of dawn. We would go outside when we were kids and we would collect bugs. We'd go around the whole perimeter of the house and just yep. see how many fresh bugs are out there. We'd take the little ones and we'd feed them to the bigger ones and we'd feed those <laughs> to the spiders. And then we'd, we'd have our own pet spider box. I mean, yeah, we, we wouldn't be alive. If there were rattlesnakes in Seattle, we'd be both oh, okay. been dead a long time ago. See how many times I got bit by a snake growing up? Oh, gosh. I, can't, I lost count. Yeah. And by the way, people, how long do you want to live like this? If you're one of these people who just lives your life in fear and just bunkers up in your house all day long and, and you're still quarantined and you never go anywhere, what's your end game here? How long do you want to do this? I mean, we don't know how many years we have left on this earth. None of us do. How many of those years do you want to spend in freaking solitary confinement? What kind of quality of life do we have there uh personally i i can't wait to just get back to the, the garage sale grind man i can't wait i, I had a taste of it I last weekend it. she goes to the house so much. i'm just sitting there going game boy game boy what, what is she gonna bring out and honestly this is better than game boys obviously what she brought out yeah with the ds and the 3ds but the For excitement sure. and that adrenaline rush when they go into the house and you're waiting oh man Ugh. What a high. What a I high. Love that feeling. Oh. My, my imagination just goes absolutely wild when people go into their house to get video games. I'm just picturing like 
piles and piles of like Pokemon games brand new in the box and just, you know, stuff that'll never happen. But like, hey, you just, found a sealed Pokemon game once, so don't say I, never. I did, and it was sitting out. I didn't even have to ask for it. Unreal. This was probably three years ago, maybe, and it was Pokemon Leaf Green on Game Boy Advance, brand new, sealed in the that old cardboard box, you know, with the plastic oh, wrapper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just sitting out. Like, I mean, they must have had that for at least 15 years. I mean, how long ago did that game come out? Um. So, uh, have you been playing any video games recently? Nothing new. I've been going back. So I did play through. I decided it was going to be my goal to play through all the old Final Fantasy games again. Nice. Like all of them. E even the ones that didn't originally release in North America. So like Final Fantasy 3 and 5? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'd probably go through 9. Ooh, wow. So I started with one. Uh, I played it on PSP. And I haven't played that game in years. And it's not a game that I've revisited a bunch of times over the years. Because I think we did have it as a as kids. Yeah, I went through we, it when we were kids. All the way through it. We had it, but I didn't play it a ton. Because we also had two and three on Super Nintendo. And I liked those so much better. Oh, that they're I way better. Those. I played those over and over and over again. But I never played one a ton. So I, I finally sat down... I played all the way through it on the PSP, which is a really great port. And I recommend if you're going to play that game, you you play it on PSP because it just it's there's so many quality of life improvements. You do not want to buy potions one at a time. Oh. You have to. It's so cumbersome. Like that old Final Fantasy on NES. It's so cumbersome. You just don't want to play that game in 2020. However. The PSP version with all those improvements, I gotta say, I went all the way through the game. It holds up remarkably well. Mm -hmm. That game does. It does. Really, I love really, it. Really I went well. through it a few years ago on the the Game Boy Advance version. Okay, the Dawn of Souls. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. might be the same as the PSP. I actually don't know though. No, PSP updated the visuals and the music and okay, a lot of stuff. It's the same basic game though. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. It's a ton of fun. Look. If you don't like grindy JRPGs, well, it's not for you. But yeah, exactly. You and I both love those games, and it's a great game. Yeah, it just surprised me how well it held up because this game came out in 1987. Yeah, like you got to imagine so much of the stuff they were just making it up as they went along. There was no established formula for this. So anyway, I played through that. I played through Octopath Traveler again because I just love that game so much. So good. And um, lately, I've been playing. This sounds so dorky, but I, I started watching speed running videos, and in particularly Super Mario Brothers Three. And I just got inspired not to speed run the game, but to do some of the tricks that they do when they speed run. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of like wall clipping and glitchy stuff that you can exploit in that game. And I just wanted to see if I could do it. So I've been playing Mario 3 just to try to do a lot of these strategies. The speed running in Mario 3 is... It's insane. It's completely insane. There are so many things that you do to that game to trick the game into changing the code. And then it thinks you're further in the game than you really are. And then all of a sudden, it's, it's crazy. It's mind-blowing. There's so many uh, killers to your speed run that are at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. The hands so that like, come out. Yeah, the hands. So it's like an hour long, almost an hour long speed run at this point. If you do no warping, no warp. Yeah. No, no warp. It's like 50 something minutes. And those hands, man, they get you. And it's all RNG. It's completely random. There is no skill involved. They either get you or they don't get you, and it can it can kill your run, and yeah. it's at the very end of your run, and it's just. And lately, people have discovered how to manipulate Hammer Brother movements, um, how to clip through more walls and stuff. So I'm just trying to do all this stuff. Like I'm not speed running the game. Don't misunderstand me. Just I am not a speed runner. 
<laughs> I just want to challenge myself to see if I can do those, you know, those sneak. And I, I've done a lot of them. I've done the seven one clip, the seven six clip, the seven nine clip, which are really hard. Dude, go to seven nine and try to do those clips, and dude, it's really tough. But I, I did all of them eventually. Are you playing on the switch with the rewind feature? Of course. Yeah. yeah. Come on. I'm not a monster. Yeah, you yeah. have to play it on on a switch or at least something with save states and rewind features just to do it over and over again. I so anyway, tried that's what I've been doing. I've tried on Super Mario Bros. one to clip through the bricks in like one two, for example. I can't do it. I had never done it. Not even once. Or four two. One two and four two, yeah. Well, okay. one, one, two, I guess, is just a weird minus world. There's no. Oh, I've done there. that. Done That's that? easy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how you get to the minus world. Yeah, no, I, I guess I've yeah. never done that. Oh, I've done that. Okay. Four, two is towards right at the beginning of the level. Yeah. You're trying to push Mario ahead a couple of frames so that the game thinks you're going down or you're going up the beanstalk when you're actually going down a pipe or yep. whatever. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I've tried that. Can't do it. Dude, it's so hard. It's a pixel perfect jump, and I just can't do it. I these, don't know. I've tried. People, like uh, Darbian, like the Cosmic Co- has the current Cosmic, yeah. Like they're like Olympic athletes in their in their craft. Dude, seriously. Because when I watch Mario Three, is what I've been doing lately. When I watch like Mitch pa- pa- Mitch Flower Power play that game. And then I'm like, okay. And look, I've been playing that game since I was 10 years old. I mean, come on. I like to think I'm pretty good at it, right? But I pick it up after watching him, and I am astounded at the high level of play that he does. I, I cannot even – I'm not even in the same league. I'm not even in the same sport as that guy is. Off the charts, man. Off the charts. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're in the major leagues. They're in their own – world and let me tell you there's just there's like those guys and then there's the rest of us yeah like so that's what i've been doing i've been watching his twitch streams every day and trying to trying to clip through seven nine that's pretty awesome uh so yeah. which final fantasy game are you on now um um just the second one and how are you playing it the second one uh, i have on psp okay yeah, and then third one I have on Game Boy Advance. Yep. And then four I've got everywhere. But Seriously. I think I'll play – I think I'll do the PSP version when I do four. And I've played that a million times. So I, I played play. the – I want to say Nintendo DS version of four. And I did not like it. That was like a completely different game. I, I did not like, like it. It was, it was more than a remake. It was yep. – it was a reboot. Yep. They made it harder, a lot harder. Yeah. They completely overhauled the graphics. It was unrecognizable. I mean, I know the isometric yeah. view was just too much. I don't like it. I don't. I don't like it either. Don't play that. The PSP has a great remake of four. It's well, really good. I would play it on OG hardware if I wanted to play it again. Quite honestly. Yeah, you can um, do that. It's funny you say that because I actually just like last night was wondering if I had all of the Final Fantasy games. And I started laying them out, and I've got all of them. I've got the 1 and 2, the Dawn of Souls, and the GBA. I've got Final Fantasy 3, also in the GBA, I'm pretty sure. And then, obviously, I've got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 on the the Super Nintendo and the PS1. Um, 5, I guess, I have two different versions. I have the PlayStation 1 version of 5 that came in the anthology, and then I have it also in the Game Boy Advance. So... Yeah, I've been thinking about doing the same thing. I just, uh, yeah. it's a commitment, man. It is. It is. And I will say this about Final Fantasy 1. Probably my biggest criticism of that game is the fact that they don't hold your hand. And, and don't misunderstand me. Like, I don't want hand-holding all the way. But, dude, if you don't have a guide or a Google or some place to look for help in Final Fantasy 1... Mm. Good luck. There are, I mean, they just don't tell you where to go next. You're just, I mean, do you remember when Nintendo Power sent everybody that strategy guide for Final Fantasy? Yeah, I still have it. They had to put that together. Yep. 
because they realized that nobody could get through this game on their own. You just, there's no direction. Like you'll beat a certain dungeon or a castle or whatever. And then like, you're supposed to go over here next to this other one, but no, or I, I, and it's a huge overworld map too. It's very big. I, I don't know. No, I'm with you. I had the guide. Nintendo Power sent it to us, and that's the only way I ever went through the game when I was a kid. Yep. Yeah. So I haven't started two yet. I'm not super looking forward to it because based on everything I've read, I've never played it. So full disclosure, I've never played Japanese Final Fantasy two. It didn't exist in North America when I was a kid, and I just never played it. But based on everything I've read, it's everybody's least favorite Final Fantasy. Yeah. Apparently the leveling up system is quirky. It's almost like an Elder Scrolls where like you have to take damage on each piece of your equipment in order to level up that equipment skill. And it just kind of turns into you purposefully getting taking a lot of damage in battles in order to level up. And I guess it's just not fun. Hmm. That's that's what I've read. So I'm not super looking forward to it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go through all I of mean, them. I mean, let's be honest. There's nothing else to do right now in this world. Yeah. Play a video I mean, game. Yeah, I, everything is closed. I can't go garage sailing. Got to do something. Um, I'm playing through uh, Fire Emblem Path of Radiance, which okay. you found at a garage sale and sold it to did. me. It has since gone up by about to at least twice in, in doubled in value since then. So I'm, I'm pretty yeah. happy that I bought it off you. Yeah. Um, a pretty good investment on that, your part. That was. So I, uh, it's, it's one of the fire Emblem games I've, I've never, never played. So, um, now that's a tough one, right? With like permadeath. So yeah, it does have permadeath. Now the tough part about that game is you just have to realize that they screwed up on the difficulty. It has easy, medium and hard. And, what most people don't realize is that the medium is actually the hard. Uh, that when they um, uh, brought it to North America and uh, you know did what they needed to do, they screwed that up. And so most people go, "Oh yeah, I'll play it on medium. You know, it's a good middle ground." Well, medium is actually really hard, and so it really breaks the game for a lot of average gamers because they're not prepared for that. And so that's a lot of people's experience. So I put it on easy. I'm like, I don't know. I just kind of want the experience. And um, it, you can the Fire Emblem games have come a long way with quality of life improvements over the years. So it's a little, you know, it, it needs help in some areas. But uh, so far, it's it's pretty easy. And I'm, I don't know. Maybe I should have actually upped the dip, difficulty because it's a little too easy so far. But uh, but it's still really mm -hmm. enjoyable, and then um, and then I don't know what's next. I got I got a whole bunch of games behind me that I haven't played yet, so I'll figure something out. Well, you know what I've been playing? It's a game that I I've always wanted to play, and I didn't get it when it came out. But Oblivion, Elder Scrolls. Yeah. I so I love Morrowind. I had I got that when it came out. Played it to death. Loved it. Oblivion came out, and I don't, for whatever reason, it just kind of fell under my radar, or like, maybe I didn't have an Xbox 360 at the time, and I don't know, for whatever reason, I just never went back and played it, but um, I've been playing it a lot now, and I gotta say, it's pretty good, it's a lot like Morrowind, you know, it's predictable. The graphics are a little worse than I expected. Um, it's an Xbox 360 game, right? Same generation as Skyrim. And yet Skyrim's graphics are way, way better. So I don't know. What, I'm wondering if, if Oblivion was developed as like an OG Xbox game or something. I don't know. The Probably. I mean, they're surprisingly kind of dull. Yeah. That, that, I didn't play a lot of Oblivion, but I have played it before just to test it, if anything. 
And that was my experience. It's shockingly bad looking compared to Skyrim, and it's on the same console. Right, exactly. And the weird thing, I don't know what Bethesda was doing back then, but we got two Elder Scrolls games in the same gen, and now we've gone through an entire generation without an Elder Scrolls game. I don't know what's going on over there. Well, anything else in your mind? <sighs> Not really. Really wish I was garage sailing this year. I know. I'll probably hit a few this weekend. And uh, that's, I mean, there won't be any more than a few. So I won't, yeah. I won't have to travel more than about 10 miles. And uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. So. Cool. All right. All right. Well, thanks for joining our BG Bros Zoom meeting, everybody. And yeah. hopefully we'll have something better to talk about next time. Sounds good. All right. Thank All right. Later.